My name's Eric Wielander and welcome to Windy Tech, a channel all about smart home tech in the Apple ecosystem. Today, we're gonna talk about HomeKit TV and where it's at in August of 2019 and is it worth it for your home setup? So back at CES in January of this year, Apple and a variety of other television companies announced that HomeKit was coming to TVs. And this meant that you could then control your television through HomeKit as a HomeKit accessory. And then they also announced that the iTunes Movie Store and then what you know later became Apple TV Plus and things are coming to smart TVs as built-in apps, just like you have Netflix and other apps on those smart TVs. And also that Apple's AirPlay technology is coming to television. And it didn't take long after CES for people to start to get uh, homebrew versions of uh, TV integration, especially with companies like LG. Uh, so then, you know, if you had one of those WebOS TVs, you started to see videos surface on the internet of people playing with HomeKit TV and it's sort of beta forms of support in the home app. Uh, and then when iOS, I think it was 12.3 came out, that officially added support for HomeKit TVs and you start to see Samsung release their TVs that support AirPlay. One of the things though to note with those TVs, even though it says it supports Apple AirPlay on the box, AirPlay and HomeKit are two different features for televisions. Uh, AirPlay is Apple's technology which allows you to take any kind of uh, content that you have on your Apple devices and then get it to play on a bigger screen. And previously you could only do this with an Apple TV box. So now with AirPlay built into a TV, you don't need the box anymore and um, you know there's probably a little more reliability around if you're trying to airplay to it while the TV's asleep than it being able to wake up and accept your airplay stream that's probably going to work better through an all-in-one unit but again keep that in mind if that's the only feature you want Samsung might be a good TV brand for you but there you're not going to get home kit support Samsung is pretty much all in on their own smart home platform called smart things and then LG recently announced that they're starting to roll out software updates to support home kit to some of their higher end 2019 TV models now there's been a lot of people angry on the internet that given how easy it was for people with homebrew and web OS to get uh, older LG TVs to support home kit why why isn't LG just making that official? And we'll just have to see what happens with that. I can totally sympathize with those people. It would be annoying to have spent a huge amount of money on a high-end TV last year and then have something like this happen. Um, but you know, hopefully something can work out, uh, you know, who knows. And then Vizio, who also announced at CES that they'd support HomeKit, they've started to, they've also officially announced that they're rolling out the finished version of their HomeKit and AirPlay integration to their TVs and will be doing so over the next couple months. Vizio previously ran a beta program where you could sign up and get a pre-release version of their HomeKit software. Now, I've jumped full into the Vizio bandwagon on this recently where I got a Vizio V505 TV which has the Vcast 3.0 software and from everything I can tell will support the AirPlay and HomeKit because I want to get that as soon as I can to give you guys a full review on the channel. But in the meantime, I'm just sitting and waiting for my TV to update. But that said, is it worth waiting? Is it worth trying to get a TV that you either think will support it now or waiting to get your TV later, you know, depending on when you're looking to upgrade? Um, I would say if you're, if HomeKit is the must have feature your TV, uh, I would say it's probably best if you're not trying to be on the bleeding edge like myself to wait until you can buy a TV in the store with HomeKit on the box. When I bought my V505, the box already had badges for Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant, which it also so works with and so I'm sure Apple and Vizio will be happy to put that works with HomeKit badge on it when they can and uh, you know I'm sure other manufacturers will be looking to do the same but if you already have just an Apple TV box so one of the the uh, black boxes that you can get from Apple hooked up to your TV you already get a whole lot of the features that you have with HomeKit for example you know, the other key feature that we're talking about here in this video, AirPlay, if you have an Apple TV, you already have AirPlay there. Now, there might be some increased reliability with having it all in the screen and elegance of not having to have the Apple TV, maybe, um, but you know, if, if AirPlay's really all you use, 
but you know, if you get an, Air, an Apple TV with your TV, then that will already support it. Now, the other key feature that HomeKit offers is being able to tie these TV events with other scenes in your smart home. Now, if you're willing to just simply talk to Siri on your Apple TV, you can just hold down on the microphone button on the remote and talk to Siri via that, and you can use that to trigger your HomeKit scenes. And so if you're getting ready to watch a movie, you can just tell Siri on the TV to, to you know, turn on movie time or whatever, and uh, you know, it won't turn on the TV for you and set the right input, but it'll still be able to dim all the lights and get everything else coordinated with it. Another thing that people seem to like to maybe want to do with HomeKit TVs is being able to ask Siri on their phone or some other device and then have that content that they ask for play on their living room TV. And of course, you can just ask Siri on the Apple TV to do the same thing but it's one last step. But personally, I rarely trust Siri to find exactly what I wanna watch. So another thing that people are excited about with HomeKit TVs is that instead of having to use the Apple TV remote or your TV remote, you can actually control your TV via the remote app or the HomeKit app in your phone, which honestly, I don't really care much about, but to some people, Maybe that's a big deal. And then from there, uh, you know, there are even some smart plugs if you just wanna get another accessory to kind of build on this automated theme. Uh, there are smart plugs like the ConnectSense smart plug that will alert you or trigger automations when um, power consumption is higher. So you can plug it into a television and then when the TV turns on, that can trigger an automation in HomeKit to set the lights a certain way. You wouldn't have flexibility in say different scenes for different ways you use your television, maybe like you know gaming at night or movie at night. Those things you wouldn't get the customization on, but if it's really just one scene you want, uh, something like a, a smart plug like that could also be a convenient option. And then you're not confined to using the Apple TV on your television. Another thing too is that more and more these TVs are supporting either Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa. So maybe for just your television, it might be worth just being able to power it on and off. You can do that from other voice assistants. Yes, if you want all of these things together, it seems like the best option is still to go with HomeKit. But depending on what your needs are and what you really care about, Maybe you don't need to buy a TV that's specifically compatible with HomeKit. You know, maybe you can just get another TV and supplement it with either an Apple TV that you might already have or a smart plug and, uh, you know, kind of work out what works for you. Now, I should note too, comparing the uh, HomeKit automation with Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa, at least with the, the Vizio TV I have, really the only smart triggers you get with those other assistants is turning the TV on or off. Uh, you also, you know, if Google can ask it to cast something to the built-in Chromecast on the TV, but that's about it. So I'd love to hear down in the comments, are you dying for HomeKit TV and just will wait for that until you, you know, change or buy a new TV or something? Or are some of these other options already good enough for you and you're not really all that interested in HomeKit TV? Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of curious what people out there are thinking. So let me know in the comments. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss my review of HomeKit TV when it comes to this home. And thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.